still fighting hard here, defending that inside line. He's going to force Augustin Canapino to the outside of turn one. It's going to switch back into the... Oh, he's diving down the inside here! <laughs> he sold the dummy there, he switched it to the inside, and he still managed to get it stopped. Oh, he gets a little bit of contact there on the way through from Philip Eng. Eng's back in this. I'm not sure Eng was entirely happy with this one car width for Augustin Canapino. And I think that was fair and square by Canapino. But, but Canapino will have learned from that, and he knows, okay, that's how we're going to race, is it? So watch this one to continue with some sparks and some fireworks between these two real-life drivers racing here on iRacing. Oh, and he sells it again! Oh, goodness, a good side-by-side, -side. Canapino and Eng, and Eng once again in the top position. So Canapino is finding it super hard to try and make his move on Philip Eng. And Eng is literally fighting till his last breath. He's just not letting it go as he weaves past to this right-hand kink. Oh, this is fantastic. Oh, they're going once again side-by-side, door-to-door, and Eng blocks it off for the chicane. Now they'll be heading into the Nordschleife. And this could be an advantage for Eng because it's super hard to pass over there. But Canapino and Philip Eng, oh my goodness, they've been nose to tail side-by-side -side with each other. And they've just shown us a different quality of racing altogether. They've shown that you can be quick, you can be fast, and you can be hardcore while being clean as well. And Philip Eng is still up ahead in P2, so Canapino is finding it to be quite a hard task to pass, pass him. This is a completely different attitude than we saw from the 89 car uh, when it was Team Redline coming to put the pass on. This, though, is truly for position in these cars on the same strategy. But while they do this, uh, they're, they're losing time here and there and the other BS competition car, the number seven, is faster on the last lap and might start getting a bit closer to this battle. I'm seeing some of the, some of the panels on both of these cars, not how they were a little while ago, the rear valence for Marla Racing Team. Not sure that's going to affect them much at all, but it is just a little bit crinkled there. These guys, you know, Philip Eng steadfastly refusing to give up that position, and now Augustin Canapino has been told, you are going to have to fight and fight like hell to get past, and that just ups the stake, ups the risk. These guys are battling for second. They're been racing for 14 hours now, these two teams. I hope no one does anything too foolish, and it's, it's interesting to see them give each other just a little bit more space on the narrow, bumpy confines of the Nordschleife than they were going to do on the GP circuit, where I think the elbows were a bit further out there, knowing there's a little bit more runoff room. And we're well, seeing Augustin Canapino put a lot of pressure on Philip Anker. You actually saw him take a look to the inside of Schwadenkraut to not really a corner where you can really make a move but someone who's got to be smiling when he hears that these two cars are fighting so hard Maximilian Bedeke he was five seconds faster than both of these cars on the last lap so out front in that Ferrari and just extending his lead in that uh, red line black car Sumo. yeah Philip Eng and uh uh, Canapino still battling it out, and as Arjun rightly mentioned, Maximilian Beneke is just pulling away thanks to this battle as we now approach the sunrise part of this race. Well, I just had to put this reference in, but at the GP circuit, they know that all the time they have to leave the space. That's, they know Fernando Alonso has. Yeah, indeed, indeed. So there's still just a couple tents between them. Canapino a little closer. On the GP circuit here, there's definitely on the Nordschleife, there's definitely still places you can pass around here if you get a good run. There's a couple places these cars get wound up all the way to six gear. And one of them is if you get a great run out of Bergwerk here, still requires a little bit of cooperation from the car in front. And I wonder what Canapino is thinking for how he's going to get this move done. Now he's seen that. Uh, nothing is off the table for Philip Eng defending that second spot. And they're catching a GT4 car pretty quickly right now, so it's going to get interesting. They're going to catch them after Bravery, which is this corner that we're just getting to right now. Justin Canapino not pressuring him too hard here. But going down into the carousel, maybe Philip Eng going to get held up a little bit by the 718 Cayman of the High School Ball Geodesic Racing Car. Well, he looks to the inside again, a little bit of contact between second and third, just the slightest tap as they go down the inside 
of the hoisting felt came in into the most photogenic corner on the circuit and if you get in a bit too hot there and slide up out of the groove and have to go the long way around I always call that doing the walk of shame neither of these guys are going to do the walk of shame on this lap and my goodness Canapino still right there maybe looking to maybe he's learned from a lap ago about when to pull out of the draft on the dotting Ahua if you're going to complete that move he was so close to it a lap ago but he pulled out of the draft was it maybe too early he got his nose in front and then the BMW just seemed to have one kilometer an hour more two kilometers an hour more maybe a difference in the rear wing setting on these cars as well that is a that is a big compromise in setup you have to make around this circuit everything in the setup is a compromise when you've got very long six gear straights but then undulating twisting sections of track and Arjuna I know you're driving a GT3 in this race so don't spill too many secrets about the dock, but which way do you lean? A bit more rear wing angle so that the car is consistent and safe and good through the twisty bits, or are you a jet down the straight? Well, you definitely have to balance both, but there's so many more compromises as well that, you, that we should kind of mention. Are you going to go slightly lower uh, and risk maybe getting some damage from, from the curves and jumps like the Lance Garden, which we saw these cars, uh, they're making their way towards uh, now, but... Also, potentially, like you say, the wing issues, but also, uh, I know a lot of teams are playing around with the error rake and things like that, but personally, I like a slightly looser car in general, just because in iRacing, that seems to be the most effective way to find pace from the tires. Uh, make sure you don't slide them too much, but you have the most amount of mo rotation in the car. And we have seen for some of these GT3 cars, the rear end being just a little bit dancey in some of the higher speed stuff. All right, let's watch this once again down the longest straight on the circuit at the highest speeds. Philip Eng, just a couple tenths ahead of Augustin Canapino, who's flashing those headlights, closing in in the slipstream, and it's getting pretty bright out on circuit. Those headlights for the Audi still will be shining into the mirrors and lighting up the cockpit for Philip Eng. When's Augustin Canapino going to pop out of the draft? He's waited longer than last lap. Maybe has he left it too late? Is he going to look for the GP circuit? Eng still leads. What about into turn one of the GP circuit where we saw some action a lap ago? You can see Canapino trying to set up that drive onto the pit straight. These guys have got three more laps in their fuel tanks. Canapino holding in line. Eng not defending. Are we going to see another dive from Canapino? We are. This one not as tricky as before. He gets the nose in front. He's got a little bit more clearance on Eng this time. And I would say that is a move very cleanly done in contrast to a lap ago between these two guys. Marlo Racing Team into second. Augustin Canapino into second. And I'm expecting the YouTube chat to look very Argentine in a couple moments time. Arjuna, what did you read in that one?